Now I want to talk about this huge elephant, what's in the room, which nobody is mentioning, in conjunction with renewable energies and hydrogen boilers. So my name is Derek Robbins from Tomcat Gas Training. Let's get on with it and find out exactly what this huge elephant is. Now, straight off the bat, as our American cousins would say, the biggest elephant in the room is you cannot save money installing green energies. Now, before you vanish, hear me out. So you rip out your old gas boiler and you install an air source heat pump. You are going to invest a lot of money doing that. Now with the prices of electric as they are at the moment, you'll see that as we're going through this video, it's very, very unlikely you are going to get your investment back because you're gonna use about three times more electricity than you are at the moment. So you're not gonna save any money, especially with on average people living a home between five and 10 years. So you might never get any investment back. Now solar panels are slightly different because you're getting free energy. So it depends on whether you're installing batteries or not. And they say it could be six, seven, up to 10 years before you could see getting any money back from your investment. So the biggest elephant in the room right at the beginning is you will not save money, but you will save CO2 production, hopefully. Now in April this year, 2022, Energy bills increased massively again for most households across the UK. The amount that it increased by varied across the UK, but on average, bills went up by 54%, increasing most people's energy bills by £700 a year. Now, electricity rates have gone up to around about 28p per kilowatt hour, with a standing charge of 45p a day and gas rates going up to around about 7p a kilowatt hour with a standing charge of about 27 pence a day. Now the high demand and the reducing supply is the main reason for this upsurge in energy prices. And these electricity prices are at the highest they've ever been since they were started in 1990. And gas prices are at the highest of what they've been for 15 years. They are up 250% since January this year. Massive increases. Now a lot of this increase in energy prices have been blamed on the certain horrific thing what's happening in the middle of Europe. And that's not technically true. So as we're going through this video, you're gonna find out exactly why our prices have increased. The cost of this energy also helps our government cover the cost for their energy policies. So these costs will help cover the schemes that the government are running to help businesses and domestic premises to change over to green energy. It's also there to help vulnerable people also who can't afford the increases in these gas and electric prices. And of course, we've got our taxes and our VAT to go on top of these energy prices. But indirectly, we're actually paying the government to help reduce our CO2 emissions. Our carbon dioxide emission figures are said to have fallen by 10% since 2019. And our CO2 emissions are said to have fallen by about 48% from our 1990 figures. So we're just under half of our net target figure, which our government have said we need to reach by the year 2050. But the largest fall of our CO2 emissions has happened over the last couple of years. I wonder why that has happened then. Was something going on in the world to stop us going to work and school and messing around? Something happened, didn't it? Well, yeah. Yeah, there was something what went on, didn't it? So that's ma the major reason why these figures have dropped drastically over the two year, last two years. So nobody was doing anything to create CO2. And to prove that, our CO2 emissions from transport have fallen by over 20% since 2019. And to bear that in mind also, the RAC have estimated that there are around 460,000 
electric vehicles on UK roads today. And with a region of around 64,000 electric and hybrid combined vehicles registered, in 2022 so far. But we've got to bear in mind there are around 39 million vehicles on the UK roads. So electric vehicles still only make up around about 2% of the vehicles on the roads of the UK. But new electric vehicles are expected to reach at least 20% of the new car sales in the UK by the end of this year, that's 2022. And they reckon they will actually outsell diesel vehicles also by the end of this year, 2022. They also reckon there was th just over 39,000 electric vehicles sold in the month of April this year, compared to just 10,000 of them sold in March. But the biggest elephant in the room for electric vehicles is there's only just over 30,000 public chargers across the UK. So if we do go over to electric vehicles and we've all got to have chargers at home, but not all the time we're going to be able to charge our vehicles at home. So I think our government needs to invest a lot more money in actual charges for public to access 24 hours a day. Also, how much does it cost to charge your vehicle at home? Shall we have a look? Now, working out how much it's going to cost to charge your electric vehicle, it's quite easy. Must be easy, because I can do it. Anyway, so domestic electric price tariff at the moment, we're saying is 28p per kilowatt hour. So all we need to do is find out what your battery is in your car, so we're saying it's a 60 kilowatt hour battery. So from flat to charged, we would do 60 times 28, which equals 16 pound 80. So around about 17 pounds to charge your car from fully flat to fully charged. And you could get a range between 100 and 200 miles, so they say. But I'm gonna compare it to my diesel van. Now, we're going to say an electric van will do about 100 miles uh, with all your tools in and stuff like that, if you're lucky. But anyway, we're going to say it's done 100 miles. It can do 100 miles with a fully charged and it's cost me 17 quid to charge an electric van. With my diesel van, it's not very good at the moment because I don't do much motorway driving. It does about 25.5 miles per gallon. So diesel prices in the UK are about £1.77 to about £1.70 where I live at the moment per litre. 4.55 litres per gallon. So it's costing me about £31.60 to do the same mileage, around about 100 miles. So you can see it's around about half the price for an electric car to a diesel van. So they say. Okay, loads of other elephants in this. Prices of the vans are a lot dearer for the electric ones. And the charge points are the main problems we've got with electric vans, especially if you're doing long journeys around the country. Have we got enough charge points to be able to be able to go around the country and drive around in? our electric van because some guys have to do a hell of a lot of miles in their vans during a week to get from job to job. So at least it's easy to work out. Now for me to change my diesel van to an electric van is not going to be an easy process. Now I live on an unadopted lane in a little cottage there's three of us in a row. We have a little footpath at the front of the house and at the side of us and behind us it's a local cricket club and I park my van on the cricket club car park and my wife parks her car outside the house. So for us to be able to have charges for electric car and electric van it's pretty damn impossible. Now just a few minutes drive down the road from us about 17 minutes walk is a Morrison supermarket and they've got a charge point there for 
I think it's either two or three cars. So if I wanted to charge my car or van, I'd probably have to drive to Morrison's and do it. And Morrison's say their charges are six times faster than their normal charges. So if you go and do your shopping, you can charge your car from flat to fully charged within 40 minutes. But would I want to walk to Morrison's every night to get my car charged? Now here at the centre we've got a little, which is literally a minute's walk away. And their car park's got two spaces for electric chargers. And I think they have three different charge points for three different cars. So uh, I could go and do it there and then charge it while I'm at work. But you're only allowed to park on that car park for about an hour, I think. So I think that shows the massive elephant we've got for electric cars at the moment. Now, yes, if you buy an electric car, you could get an electric charger at, at home. But in Tameside, where I live, there's thousands of terraced houses with st on streets where there's double yellow lines outside the house and they can't park outside the house. So where are they going to charge their electric cars? So this is what the government has to sort out. It's all right them pushing electric cars. It's all right them saying every, we're gonna get rid of diesel and petrol cars and the manufacturers have to stop producing them. But how are most people gonna charge their cars if they don't have a driveway to park their car at night? And what if they've got two, three, four cars? Because some people have kids who have cars while they're still living at home. So how are they going to charge the cars? And why aren't they mentioning hydrogen cars? Hmm. Because hydrogen cars are available, but uh, they never get a mention. It's all about we've got to use electric cars. Isn't there anything else we could use? Anyway, more elephants then. Now, typically people are thinking all these increases in fuel, electricity, gas, food is all due to what's happening in Middle Europe. But the Ruskies only provide about 10% of the fuel around the world. And we in the UK only take about 3% of their gas. So why this massive increase then? Did we not come out of Europe? Anyway, that's another story. So where exactly do we get our gas from in the UK? Now, most of the UK gas imports come from Norway, but we do have a pipeline what comes across the English Channel from Europe and we get some gas from Belgium and the Netherlands. So as you can see, a lot of our gas we use in the UK doesn't come from the Ruskies. It comes from the North Sea, it comes from the English Channel, and it comes from the Irish Sea. We could be pretty self-sufficient in gas, but our prices are still massively up. Where do we get our electricity from in the UK? Well, we make it here on the little island. <laughs> but what do we use to make electricity? That's the big issue. Now, if our government wants us all to go electric, that means we're going to produce a lot more electric. 80% of the house stock in the UK is heated by gas. But if our government wants us to convert everything to electricity, then we're going to need a lot more of that. So what other things do we make electricity with in the UK? Well, like I say, we use natural gas. <laughs> so about 50% of our electricity in the UK is made by burning fossil fuels. So that's burning gas and burning coal. So that's not a good start for making green energy. We also use wind power, we also use nuclear, and we can use other things like solar PV, and we can even use water to turn turbines to create electricity. So there's loads of ways in the UK we create our own electricity, but we burn a lot of natural gas to make electricity. Hmm, there's another big elephant, isn't it? So renewable energy makes up about 30% of our production of electricity in the UK. Coal on its own is about 13% and nuclear is about 11%. So they're the percentages we're using to create electricity. So don't we need to make our electricity green first before we start telling everybody we've got to use electricity and go to electric cars 
and have air source heat pumps, ground source heat pumps and all the rest of the electrical stuff they want us to use. Don't you think we need to make our electricity 100% green first before we turn everything into electricity and get rid of fossil fuels? So there are about 23 million homes in the UK that uses gas to heat their home and heat their hot water. And that accounts for about 77% of the UK emissions for heating hot water and central heating. And that's about 57 million metric tons of CO2 produced every year just so we can warm our hands with our hot water and wash our hands with our hot water and warm our homes. So the government is desperate for us to get rid of this CO2 and reduce our emissions and they're throwing loads of funding into heat pumps, electric vehicles and they want to get rid of gas boilers but don't they want to start putting funding into making their green electricity first? This is what I don't get. So we want to get rid of gas boilers or the government wants to get rid of gas boilers and everything go over to electric but 50% of our electric is made by fossil fuels. But if 80% of the house stock in the UK uses gas to heat it, how much more electricity do we have to make to be able to combat natural gas? Well, we have got hydrogen, and we're going to be looking at that in more detail pretty soon. So like I say, our government wants us to go over to heat pumps. So what is a heat pump then? So in simple terms, an electric heat pump works like a fridge in reverse. So it takes the warmth from the outside air or the ground or a river and then converts that into energy which we can use in our homes to heat them and produce hot water. So these heat pump units look pretty much like an air conditioning unit and they will be installed outside the property in our fantastic UK weather. So why is the government desperate for us to install these heat pumps? Well, because 80-85% of the house stock in the UK is using gas and they want to get rid of it, they've got to think of a green way of heating hot water and our homes. And the way they've kind of come up with is the use of heat pumps. Now, heat pumps can be air to air or air to water, so that means you can use the heat pump to heat warm air around the house or you can actually heat the uh, via the heat pump to heat the water which can circulate around your radiators under the floor heating. But there's a massive, massive expense to heat pumps. It's not like a gas boiler where you can just rip a gas boiler off the wall and put a new gas boiler on, connect it up and within half a day it's up and running and away we go. Heat pumps don't work like that because a lot of design needs to go into a heat pump. Heat loss calculations is massive for heat pumps and if you get it wrong, the heat pump doesn't work but uses massive amount of electricity. Now, who's gonna install these heat pumps? I've had a few discussions with electricians and they think they're gonna be installing them. Not a chance. Because at the end of the day, we're still gonna to need to heat the water via a heat pump. So that means we're going to need plumbers and gas engineers to retrain to be able to install these heat pumps. And have we got the actual engineers out there in the UK who can all of a sudden jump on installing thousands of heat pumps a year? Well, they're actually looking at installing 1.3 million heat pumps every year. We've got 120,000 gas engineers in the UK. So if we're going to get rid of the boilers, are we going to be training all the gas engineers to install heat pumps? But it's our right training the engineers, but have the engineers got the experience at installing these heat pumps? No, they don't. Because for us in the UK, heat pumps are relatively new and are being pushed massively by our government to an extent that... I don't think they're ever going to reach the figures they want to install because can the heat pump manufacturers in make them as quick as they want to have them installed? Can our electricity grid be increased 
to be able to cope with demand for the electricity from heat pumps and electric vehicles. Have we got the infrastructure? No, we haven't. And that is the massive elephant where it comes to green energy. They might want us to go over to this green energy, but are they giving us the tools to be able to go over to green energy and save CO2 production and hopefully save the planet? So currently, less than a quarter of a million homes in the UK have heat pumps installed. But there are 29 million homes in the UK. So an 85, well 80 to 85 percent of those have gas in them. Between 2019 and 2020, around about 100,000 heat pumps were installed across the UK. But 1.7 million homes were connected to the gas supply in the same period. So that means heat pumps at the moment, as we are speaking, make up about 2% of the way homes are heated and water is heated in the UK. It's a tiny little figure. So we want to go from 2% up to 100% by 2050. That's some task. And it was also found in a new report that 54% of our current homes in the UK would struggle to have heat pumps installed in them. My house being one of them, because I live in a little tiny cottage with solid walls, with solid floors, which are going to be virtually impossible to insulate to the correct figures to be able to install a heat pump, which is going to heat the house and heat the hot water. But gas companies are trying to combat this use of electricity by the introduction of hydrogen boilers. So what's a hydrogen boiler then? Hydrogen is the most abundant element in the known universe. On Earth, the vast majority of hydrogen molecules are made up in natural gas and water. There are almost no pure hydrogen atoms on this planet. And absolutely none of it is green or blue hydrogen. Hydrogen is a colourless, non-toxic gas which is highly explosive. Now, like I say, hydrogen can be made from natural gas or water. So depending upon what you're making the hydrogen from will depend on whether it's blue or green hydrogen. Now, making it from natural gas will make it blue hydrogen and making it from water makes it green hydrogen. But the only problem again is, if we want to make pure green hydrogen, we're going to need copious amounts of electricity to be able to make it from water. Now when we're making hydrogen from natural gas, we need to remove that CO2. And then what do we do with the CO2? Well basically they say they're going to bury it. Uh, that for me, that is not the way forward for making this planet green. I'm all for hydrogen because it's byproducts of hydrogen or water and oxygen. There's no carbon to make carbon dioxide or carbon monoxide. But we don't want to be removing the carbon dioxide and then burying it in our old mine shafts, do we? Because isn't there a chance of it leaking out? And then we're back to square one. We might as well just stay with natural gas. And like I say, when the hydrogen is made from water, we need electrolysis. So like I say again, we need copious amounts of green electricity to be able to make this green hydrogen and not create CO2 in the process of making it. But whether they actually decide to make hydrogen from natural gas or from water, I think personally it is going to play a big part in reducing our CO2 emissions and making our homes heated and the hot water heated via green energy. And at the end of the day, that's what our government wants us to do. And I think quite a large percentage of the population in this country also want to make our energy via green processes. 
So what's the difference between a hydrogen boiler and a natural gas boiler? Well, if you look at the box on the outside, absolutely nothing. <laughs> They're going to look exactly the same and they are going to work virtually exactly the same. The only slight differences we're going to have is safety devices, uh, how we're going to uh, detect the flame when the flame goes out. That's the big difference because the way we do it at the moment, we need the carbon to be able to make our safety devices work. Also, with natural gas having a nice blue flame when you burn it, when you burn hydrogen, it does, it's colourless, it doesn't have a flame. So they're using silica to make it a orange colour. So for gas engineers in the UK, which we look purposely for a nice blue flame to say we've got complete combustion, that's going to go and we're going to have a nice orange flame, which doesn't kind of compute with most gas engineers at the moment. Because for us, an orange or yellow floppy flame is in complete combustion. So what they're going to do is, at the moment, or what they're suggesting is, we're going to have a blend of hydrogen put into the natural gas. And we're going to do it up to 20%. So if they do add this 20%, it's like taking a million cars off the road straight away and if they do do this 20 percent blend with the natural gas it makes no difference to our boilers cookers or fires at the moment which are working off natural gas if we do go higher than the 20 percent blend and we go up to 100 percent hydrogen then that's where all our new gas appliances will come in they have already sorted out hydrogen cookers hydrogen fires and hydrogen boilers they're already done tested and approved all the government needs to do now is throw a load of money into the infrastructure of hydrogen and get the natural gas uh, lines brought up to be able to carry hydrogen because hydrogen cannot be carried in a steel pipe it needs to be carried into a plastic pipe in the northwest, there's not a lot to do there because most of our mains now under the roads are plastic. So hydrogen can go through those quite easily. There just need to be a few modifications coming into the homes. So we would need, if we go to 100% hydrogen, we would need new gas meters, we would need new ECVs, we would need new anacondas, and we would need new boilers, cookers and fires to be able to work on this 100% hydrogen. So for gas engineers, hydrogen is quite an exciting future for us. And hopefully it is going to play a big part in reducing the CO emissions that are produced in the UK.